Top 50 free agent predictions this offseason. Let's do it. There are three wild cards I still want to mention. Trevor Bauer, great year in Japan. He's just not well-liked. I think he stays overseas. Then Kershaw and Votto both could retire, but if they don't, Kershaw's last playoff game was the dagger, and he goes back to his hometown with the Rangers, and Votto stays in the Central and signs with the Pirates. Now let's do the top 50. 50, Michael A. Taylor. Coming off his second best year, he showed some surprising pop in his bat. He returns to Minnesota on a two-year deal for $16 million. 49, Matt Moore. Every team could use a lefty reliever. Very good numbers last two years. Taylor Rogers got three years, and Moore is better, so could expect the same with a little more money. Red Sox, three years, $36 million. 48, Adam Duvall. A hot start last year at Boston was slowed down with injuries, but even in August, he slugged 685. He's the definition of a modern-day player, but a risky sign-in. Angels, two years, $30 million with option. 47, Craig Kimbrell. A nice bounce back year making his ninth all-star appearance, but his performance in the NLCS could cost him a little in his contract. But with a name that big and good number in two and a half of his last three years, teams will be calling. Tigers, two years, 20 million with option. 46, Tim Anderson. Unplayable last year and has been on a decline since 2020. His flashiness and resume will still land him with the prove it deal. Athletics, one year, seven million with option. 45, Hector Neris. Very reliable reliever his whole career and most teams would see him as a setup man reds pair him up with diaz on a two-year 14 million dollar deal 44 frankie montez injured and bad with the yankees but his last year and a half with the athletics were very good and that's what teams will be betting on give him a prove it deal nationals sign him to hope to flip by the deadline one year 10 million 43 brandon bell huge year for the jays after considering retirement after 2022 you can't use him against lefties but the majority of teams would sign up for a 490 slugging at first or DH. The Mariners need a DH and possibly a first baseman dependent on France. One year, 16 million with player option. 42, Yuki Matsui. First of a few overseas players in this video. Dominant reliever for Japan in the last three seasons and as a lefty, every team will be curious but won't want to offer as much as Mora who's proved himself here. This one is as open as it gets but we'll do Cardinals three years, 20 million. 41, Eddie Rosario. Trade to the Dodgers at the deadline. Rosario is a quality second base but not a huge free agent signing. Cardinals make back-to-back signings, this time for two years, 12 million. 40, Gio Urshela. It's a lot to bank on him returning to his 2019 self, but even if you're getting his twin self, you did okay. Giants make their first sign in two years, 22 million. 39, Whit Merrifield. A huge name for the Royals a few years ago, just hasn't been the same player as of late. Still solid, but his prime seems to be over. Teams will hope he can be a bit better than his last three campaigns, though. Mariners add him for two years, 18 million. 38, Harrison Bader. With his speed and glove, it looked like Bader has turned into a star, but he was disappointing the last two seasons in New York, and now he's set for a much smaller contract. Blue Jays replace Kiermaier with Bader in their outfield, one year, seven million with option. 37, Jock Peterson, an all-star a year ago, kept up his power this season, but an injury prevented him from playing a full year. Angels signed another big power bat with Duvall, three years, 60 million. 36, Justin Turner, every time you believe he might fall off due to age, he keeps going. Looking for at least a two-year deal, some teams could be hesitant. D-backs would place one agent third baseman for another, or first, or DH, wherever you want to put them. Two years, 30 million. 35, Tyler Maley. This season, he was only able to pitch in five games, and he'll miss the start of 2024, most likely meeting either a one-year deal with option or two years. Tigers, two years, 22 million. 34, Michael Lorenzen. Every team could use a safe back of the end starter with upside, making him very open. Rockies always need it, and they might even pay the most. Three years, 30 million. 33, Sean Manea. He stayed on the West Coast his whole career. He stays there, but this time goes to the Angels for three years, 36 million. 32, Nick Martinez. A nice story in San Diego the last two years. Padres need pitching, and Martinez doesn't want to lose his success. They declined a two-year, $32 million option, but they signed him for a little cheaper at two years, $26 million. 31, Reynaldo Lopez. He already signed with the Braves three years, $30 million, so I'll take my L on that one. 30, Kevin Kiermaier. As reliable as it gets in center field, and his bat is good enough. Yankees give him two years, $28 million. 29, Kenta Maeda. Baltimore will most likely add a true ace but they still need solid middle guys and a vet like Maeda is perfect for the Orioles two years 34 million with option 
28. Robert Stevenson Another example of the Rays turning anyone into a good reliever. The question, like always, is can he keep it up somewhere else? He has all the stuff to do it in the Mets. Adam with Edwin Diaz for two years, 24 million with option. 27. Yariel Rodriguez A huge wild card this offseason coming over from Japan. Kodai Singa worked out well for the Mets, and they keep the trend up adding Rodriguez this year. Four years, 40 million. 26 Jack Flaherty. He's never turned out to be the Cy Young caliber pitcher he was supposed to be, and his contract only dropped after his short stint with Baltimore. You're looking at more of a two year deal with possibly multiple options. Royals, two years, 22 million. 25 Aroldis Chapman. His overall numbers were fine, but he blew 5 of 11 saves between his two teams. The White Sox are expected to be one of the worst teams again in 24, but adding Chapman is one, exciting, and two, gives him a possible trade trip. Two years, 25 million. 24, Michael Waka. Last two years in Boston and San Diego is going to get him a multi-year contract this time. Reds have all the young talent, but they need a vet and a quality arm is a perfect start. Four years, 40 million. 23, Mitch Garver. Last two years for the Rangers were huge for him and Texas, but throughout his whole career, injuries have been a huge concern. Red Sox desperately need another bat, and they bet on him to stay healthy for three years, 45 million. 22, Jordan Hicks. Anytime you can throw as hard as Hicks, teams are going to want you. Now add on the season he just had with the Jays and Cardinals, teams are really going to want you. Yankees get the flamethrower for four years, 32 million. 21 Seth Lugo. Coming off his first year starting since 2017, this one was a lot better, but at 34 and an injury last year, his contract could still be limited. Cubs get him to replace Stroman, three years, 33 million. 20 JD Martinez. Three straight All Star appearances, but he's 36. It'll take either two years at a high AAV or three years to convince him to sign. Yankees get him for three years, 42 million. 19 Reese Hoskins. The bat is one of the best in the market, but missing all of last season will have him at a one or two year deal. Cubs two years, 36 million with an opt out. 18 Jorge Soler. Soler's career has been so up and down that teams will be skeptical, but his power and year with the Marlins still sets him up for three to four years. Blue Jays, three years, 45 million. 17, Lucas Giolito. We've seen Giolito's best during his three year stretch with the White Sox, but 2022 was below average, and this year got worse by the team. Mets give him two years at a high AAV. 38 million total. 16, Marcus Stroman. The All-Star is looking for his first long-term home since Toronto. He has the cockiness that's good for the bright lights, and a team who always seems to find themselves in the lights needs a starter. Dodgers, four years, 65 million. 15, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. First time All-Star this year has put up good numbers his whole career. Braves add yet another big bat to their lineup, five years, 75 million. 14, Yun Ho Lee. Dominated in the KBO, he's still only in his mid-20s. As all guys that come from overseas, there's still some questions. Arizona is losing Gary L, and there's still some younger guys there who haven't performed. D-backs get him for five years, 60 million. 13, Teoscar Hernandez. The strikeouts come at a very high rate, but if you're okay with around 30 homers still, then you're good to go. Marlins at a much needed bat, four years, 70 million. 12, Jaime Candelario. His prove it deal worked out perfect, and now he's set up for a much bigger contract. Blue Jays lose Chapman, we'll get to where in a minute, but they need a new guy at third. Four years, 72 million. 11, Shota and Managa. Last international signing went well for the Angels, so might as well try again. Six years, 80 million. 10, Eduardo Rodriguez. Back to Boston, he goes for the Southpaw. Good in Detroit, but looking for more years and money. Five years, 90 million. Nine, Sonny Gray. Second place in AL Cy Young, he is looking for a huge payday to be a team's ace. The Braves are looking for a number two to go with Spencer Strider. Six years, 120 million. Eight, Jordan Montgomery. Went from a very good pitcher who was going to get the bag to an even bigger contract with his playoff run. Six years, 125 million with the Rangers. Seven, Matt Chapman. Coming off yet another gold glove this year. Cubs lock him down for seven years, 160 million. Aaron Nola had gone to the Cardinals. He goes back to Philadelphia. So again, second L. Five, Josh Hader. Could we be looking at the largest reliever contract ever? Probably. Other than a small hiccup in 22, it was tough to be more dominant than Hader has been. He'll demand higher than Diaz's 20.4 AAV. He gets six years, 128 million from the Rangers. I had Blake Snell going to Philly to replace Nola, but I guess it could still happen. But now I have Blake Snell going to the Cardinals. Three, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. A recent report said he prefers the West Coast, and there's a team there who always has money and needs more starters. The Dodgers add another one to match with Stroman. At only 25, he could get a decade-long contract too. 
10 years, 250 million. Two, Cody Bellinger. Three disappointing years after winning MVP. He got a prove it deal and he definitely proved it. Yankees get their guy, eight years, 210 million. One, Shohei Otani, the biggest free agent maybe ever. Nothing more needs to be said with Shohei. The Dodgers are far and away the favorite to land him, but the Cubs are showing very serious interest in Otani. And they have already proven with counsel and my predictions before this that they are more than willing to spend money. And they get it done with Shohei Otani for 11 years to take him to age 40 and for $525 million.